In this module, we will discuss ordinary least square regression for multiple variables. Conceptually, it is extremely similar to the two variable case and hence in this module, we will only touch upon the differences between regression for two variables and regression for multiple variables. The contents of this module are as follows. Firstly, we will talk about the most important aspect of multiple regression that is the interpretation of coefficients. Secondly, we will briefly give the formulae for calculation of the OLS estimators. Thirdly, we will talk about the coefficient of determination R square. Fourth, we will talk about hypothesis testing on R square. And fifth, we will talk about additional notes. So assume that our population regression function is y i equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 i plus beta 2 x 2 i plus beta 3 x 3 i plus u i. Now alpha which is the intercept coefficient represents the value of y when all the x i's are equal to 0. In two variable regression beta 1 would be the effect of a unit change in x 1 on y 1. It is similar in multiple regression but with the caveat that all other factors that is x2, x3 should remain constant that is ceteris paribus. Hence beta 1 would represent the change in value of y for a unit change in x1 everything else remaining constant. Similarly for beta 2 it is the change in value of y for a unit change in x2 everything else that is x1 and x3 remaining constant. The R square or the coefficient of determination is the percentage of deviation of y i from its mean that is explained by x1, x2 and x3 put together. Now the question is how do we calculate these coefficients alpha, beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3. For that let us just directly give the formulae. The formulae are slightly more involved than the ones in the two variable case. I look at these formulae as more of a necessary evil that is why they are very complicated it is also important to know them. The good thing is that you just need to know the formulae for alpha and one of the betas because the formulae for the other betas will be similar to the first beta. Also note that the denominator in case of beta 2 and beta 3 or any other slope coefficient is also the same. Let us talk about alpha. Alpha is given by mu y which is the mean value of y minus beta 1 into mu x1 which the mu x1 is the mean value of x1 minus beta 2 into mu x2. So you need to know the mean values of x1, x2, x3 and y and you also need to know the value of beta 2, beta 3 and the other betas. And the value of beta 2 is given by summation of y i into x2 i into summation of x3i whole square minus summation of yi into x3i into summation of x2i into x3i. Note that since these are all small alphabets, these represent the deviation of y from its mean. Hence yi here is not the yi itself, but it is yi minus the mean value of yi. Now let us talk about the variances of those coefficients that we have previously seen. These formulae seem to be even more complicated than the previous ones. But again note that the denominator in all three cases is the same. It is summation of x2i square into x3i square minus summation of x2i into x3i whole square. This is the same as the denominator of beta 2 and beta 3 in finding out the estimate of the coefficient. Also note that this in all of these it is multiplied by sigma star square. Sigma square itself would represent the variance of the error term in the population regression function that is summation of ui square. However, since we do not know the population regression function, hence we use an estimate of sigma square in which case let us call it sigma star square. Now sigma star square is equal to summation of e i square by n minus k whereas n is the sample size and k is the number of explanatory variables. In our case it is equal to 3. Summation e i square 
is the error term in the sample regression function. Hence, it is the unexplained part of the sample that we find. As far as the coefficient of determination r square is concerned, we again have a formula which is given by beta 2 into summation of yi into x2i plus beta 3 into summation of yi into x3i. The numerator in this case is the explained sum of squares or the ESS. Note that it is intuitively quite obvious. For example, if beta 2 increases, that is if beta if x2 has an a strong relationship with y, then ESS will also increase. The denominator has summation of yi square, which is the total sum of squares. Remember that yi, which is small y, represents the deviation of y from its mean, and hence what we are summing up is the sum of the deviation of yi's from the mean yi, which is mu y. The interpretation of the coefficient of determination is that it is the percentage of deviation of y from its mean that is explained by all the independent variables put together. Now if we want to do hypothesis testing using multivariate regression, then we have already found out one, the value or the mean value of the coefficients, we found out the variances of the coefficient and under the same assumptions of the classical linear regression model and the central limit theorem, we can do hypothesis testing even for multivariate regression. We talk of something called the ANOVA table or the analysis of variance table. What this table does is that it breaks down the variance of y from its mean mu y into two different sources. First due to regression or ESS. As we said, this is given by beta 2 into summation yi x2i plus beta 3 into summation yi x3i plus if there were certain other variables, for example, if there was a x4, then it will be plus beta 4 into summation yi into x4i. The degrees of freedom of the ESS or the estimated sum of squares is equal to k minus 1, where k is the number of explanatory variables. In our sample regression function, since we have three explanatory variables, alpha, x2, x3, hence the degrees of freedom is 2. MSS equals the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. The next source of variation is due to the residual or the RSS. The sum of squares equals summation EI square. The degrees of freedom equals n minus 3 and in general n minus k where k is the number of parameters in our case equals 3. And hence MSS equals summation EI square by n minus 3. The total sum of squares is summation YI square. The degrees of freedom is n minus 1. You would remember that the degrees of freedom is the number of parameters that are estimated to find out a particular value. For example, when we say total sum of squares, to find out yi minus mu y square, we need to first estimate mu y and hence we lose one degree of freedom there and hence the degrees of freedom of total sum of squares equals n minus 1. The minus 1 represents the degrees of freedom lost due to finding out the mean of y. And similarly, the degrees of freedom for the ESS and in the RSS hold a similar meaning. The hypothesis testing for the individual coefficients beta 2 or beta 3 or alpha has already been discussed in another module. Hence in this module we will only discuss the joint hypothesis test where the null hypothesis is that beta 2 equal to beta 3 equal to 0 or equivalently that r square equal to 0. That is x2 and x3 put together do not explain the deviation in yi. First you set up the null hypothesis. Second, you choose the level of significance as 1%, 5% or 10%, depending on the degrees of error that you are comfortable with. Now the test statistic in this case is an F distribution. It is an F distribution where we are dividing the estimated sum of squares by the residual sum of squares, wherein both are also divided by their degrees of freedom. So you can refer back to the ANOVA table and see that the MSS is equal to the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. Hence what we are doing is we are dividing MSS due to regression divided by 
the MSS of the residual. This F distribution will have k minus 1, comma n minus k degrees of freedom. This is because the degrees of freedom of the numerator, which is the MSS of the regression, is equal to k minus 1, as we see in the ANOVA table, and the de degrees of freedom of the denominator or the residual sum of squares is n minus 3. Hence, this test statistic, f test statistic, will follow the f distribution with k minus 1 degrees of freedom in the numerator and n minus k degrees of freedom in the denominator. If this test statistic lies in the rejection region, we will reject the null hypothesis that r square equal to 0. Finally, we talk about the adjusted r square. The problem with r square is that the more variables that you add, if you keep on adding x4, x5, x6, the r square will never go down. At worst, the coefficient of the new variables x4, x5, x6 can be equal to 0, in which case r square will be the same as before. But in no case can r square actually deteriorate. Hence, there is an incentive for any econometric student to keep adding explanatory variables. To adjust for this, we talk about something called the adjusted r square. The formula for the adjusted r square is 1 minus 1 minus r square into n minus 1 by n minus k. The use of r square is that since r square equal to estimated sum of square by total sum of squares, as n increases, r square will increase as we have previously talked. Hence, adjusted r square can be used to compare the fit of two models with the same dependent variable. This is extremely important. When we are comparing adjusted r square for two different models, we can only compare them when the dependent variable is same, that is when the y is same. Now we'll refer back to the formula and look at certain features of adjusted r square. As k increases, that is, as the number of explanatory variable increases, adjusted r square will decrease for the same r square and the same n. Hence this is the penalty for extra variables. Adjusted r square also can be negative. Unlike r square which always has to be positive, there can be cases in which adjusted r square is negative. Hence adjusted r square is a good method of comparing two different models and actually penalizing an econometric student for adding multiple variables. Finally, some additional notes. The relationship between f and r square is important. As we have said, f equals to ESS by degrees of freedom divided by RSS by degrees of freedom. Now, if you divide both the numerator and the denominator by the total sum of squares, then you get f equal to r square divided by k minus 1 divided by 1 minus r square into n minus k. Hence, we observe that f and r square are directly proportional. That is, the higher the r square, the higher will be the f value and hence higher is the chance that it will fall in the rejection region. Hence, a higher r square will tend to increase the chances of rejecting the null hypothesis that it is equal to 0, which obviously seems to be intuitively obvious. Because of this, the f table or the NOVA table can also be written in terms of the r square, which we have not covered here, but you could explore in other books. Secondly, we need to know when to add an explanatory variable. And since from a discussion in adjusted r squares, it seems that one should add an explanatory variable only as long as the, the adjusted r square increases, which will happen only when the t value of the new variable that we are adding is greater than 1 in absolute terms. Thirdly, when we were talking about computation of the coefficient or the variance of the coefficient, we needed the summation et square. However, since summation et square will be difficult to know unless you find out the values of alpha and beta and then you find out the ETs and then you find out the summation of ET square which is a lengthy process. Since it is not known directly, hence we can use a shortcut. The shortcut is that summation of ET square is summation of yi square minus beta 2 into summation of yi into x2i minus beta 3 into summation of yi into x3i. As you can see, the summation yi square is the total sum of squares or the TSS 
एंड बीटा टू इंटू समेशन वाई आई इंटू एक्स टू आई माइनस बीटा थ्री इंटू समेशन वाई आई इंटू एक्स थ्री आई इज द एस्टिमेटेड सम ऑफ स्क्वायर और द ई एस एस हिंस वी यूज एन इनडायरेक्ट फॉर्मूला दैट आर एस एस इक्वल टू टी एस एस माइनस ई एस एस टू फाइंड आउट समेशन ई टी स्क्वायर दिस ब्रिंग्स टू एन एंड आर स्टडी ऑफ द मेथ ऑफ द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द ऑर्डिनरी ली स्क्वायर इन बोथ द टू वेरिएबल एंड द मल्टीवेरियट केस we will now talk about other uh, additions to regression models such as functional forms dummy variables and then we will talk about the violations of the classical linear regression model